I'd like to thank the choir for a couple of great numbers. I'd like to say good afternoon to the sons and daughters of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob right here in Jackson, Mississippi. How are everybody doing today? All right. Uh, I'm Brother Melvin, and my reader today will be Brother Antonio. And we just, uh, as always, before we get started, we got to read the, read the law. We're going to read Exodus um, 20. Go ahead. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow thou thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that take his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day of the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, and it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father, honor thy father and mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. All right, read uh, Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, 13 and 14 verse. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For, for God shall judge every work in, I'm sorry for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil and now we'll go to Revelation 22 and pick it up at verse 13 go ahead I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end the first and the last blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city for without are dogs and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and make it a lie. That's a reading of the, a reading of the law, the commandments that God, that God ordered us to keep until he returned. Even when he returned, we're going to be keeping them. Uh, so that's um, in uh, the tenth commandment that the world seemed to think that God put away. Cause I remember in... Uh, in Matthew, when the young man asked, uh, asked Jesus, said, what must I do to get eternal life? And that's the only reason you hear today is to get eternal life. And, uh, and Jesus gave him the answer to keep the commandment. That's, right. so that's, why, that's why we read that, because it, that's, the, that's the main reason you hear is to get salvation. You didn't come out to see me. I hope you didn't. <laughs> you come out to get the word of God, you know, and that's what we go deal with today. As, as like I said, I'll just thank God for my travel that He got us here all safe and sound. Give Him the praise for that, and and to be here on the Lord's uh, Sabbath day to deal with His word, which He command us to do, yes, and that's what we gonna do is deal with God's word. And what we gonna deal with today? I look back. I thought I wanna see that. <laughs> what they had on the board and I look back there I see me <laughs> we ain't finna deal with me <laughs> we gonna deal with the the title is the Godhead two members that I want the Godhead two members that I want because it, you might, it might not seem hard to us they got some understanding but to the world this is, this is a hard sum 
And I went on that clubhouse, which I encouraged my young brothers to keep doing it because I'm too old for it because I've been busted out and broke some mirrors in my house. <laughs> so I went on there and I listened to them dealing with the God here. I'm told, and, and, and some of them supposed to act like they had knowledge and understanding. They don't have a clue about the God here. The whole world seemed to be lost when it comes to this Godhead. You know, some things say, oh, it ain't but one God. And then that throw them for a loop. I had a brother that called me from Dallas, got out of the organization. Stop coming to the Israel of God. Because he said, the Bible said in Isaiah, it ain't but one God. I said, ain't but one God. I said, but in the Godhead. That's why we always have to say God here, because if I tell you one God, and then I start breaking it down, say, hey, now Jesus, that's one, and then the Father, that's two. Now you're saying two gods. And you, you, now you still kind of throw the people for a loop. Mm -hmm. So you always got to get this thing to the Godhead, for you can show that in the Godhead, it's two members. Not one, not three, but two. You got two members in the Godhead. But this, I'm telling you, this is a big mystery to the world. Because now they say, if they name of one God, now they, got, now they got Jesus. He's God in the Old Testament. Then he became, he came and died for the, for the church. Now he's the Holy Ghost in the church. Because they got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. I'm told this, is, this Godhead thing is a really a mystery to the world. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to show you. All you got to do is just read the book. Just read this book. You know, this book, God done left a big old instruction book, and we try to figure things out without opening the book. I had a brother, I had one of my brothers on tell we was just talking about something. He said, well, the soul don't die. I said, well, let me open up the book. Oh, no, we don't need to open the Bible up. I said, well, how are we going to know the truth? He said, well, I know the soul don't die. And you know what I said then. How about them cowboys? <laughs> Because that's what I do when I can't, when, when you can't talk the word with me. I just go on somewhere else. Because <laughs> ain't no need to, how are we going to argue about uh, either a de debate or discuss anything if we don't open the book up and look at it? That's right, brother. So that's how, I, even when you see me on Facebook, when I'm talking to a brother, and I'm putting stuff reason with him, what's my next statement going to be? How about them cowboys? <laughs> Because I'm through with it. <laughs> I'm not going to get frustrated over because you won't simply read the word of God. So that's what we're going to do now. Let's start this in 1 Timothy 2, and let's pick it up at verse 1. 1 Timothy 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Okay, go ahead, my brother. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable, peaceable, peaceable life in this godliness and honesty. Go ahead. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. See, this is the whole thing. When you, This is why we come here. To read the word of God to come to what? The knowledge of the what? True. What is the truth? The word of God. That's right. Go ahead. Five. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Now, he said there is one God and one mediator between God and man, and that's Jesus Christ. It ain't but one God. See, this is one first time you got to understand that is a true statement. It ain't but one God. Let's go to Ephesians. Let's get some evidence that it ain't but one God. Let's, let's go back up to Ephesians. And while you're thinking about it, while we go into Ephesians, think about how many men, how many men do we have? It ain't but one man. Both male and female. The woman is a, is, is a man too, but she is a warm man. They both are man, but it ain't but one man. Ephesians 4 
And let's pick it up at verse 4. Go ahead. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. See, we got evidence in the name of one God. Ain't but one God. Let's keep getting evidence that it ain't but one God. Let's go in the, in the Old Testament now, Isaiah 43. That's why certain things in the Bible have to be qualified, you know, because it, it, it's a whole lot of things sometimes it's said in the Bible. You have to go and qualify and, and make sure you understand what you are reading. Isaiah 43, you don't have to get off in no in interpretation. You just qualify what you're saying. Isaiah 43, and pick it up at verse 9. Go ahead. Let all the nations be gathered together, and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this, and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses, that they may be justified, or let them hear and say, it is truth. Ye are my witnesses, said the Lord. Talking to Israel, go ahead. And my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know that that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. <laughs> it looked like it ain't but one God. Because he said, Before me there will be no God formed, and neither shall there be after me. See, this get <laughs> this throw people to the loop. So wait a minute, he keep reading, ain't but one God. Read the 11 verse. Go ahead. I, even I, am the Lord. And beside me, there is no Savior. There ain't no Savior beside me. You ever heard your parents talk? And they be telling you, so boy, look here. You, if when your father talking to you. Now, you know husband and wife supposed to be what? One. Supposed to be one. So sometimes when they talking to you, my, your father might say, boy, you don't listen to nobody but me. Is he, is he excluding mama? No, oh, he's speaking just, just hard. He's a speaker at that time. He's speaking for the pair's head. I'm trying to, I'm going to walk you on into this thing, you know, because they're supposed to be one. So, boy, you better not let nobody, you don't listen to nobody to me. Everything I tell you, if I tell you to jump, you're supposed to jump. And that's why parents got to learn if I tell Little Joe, he can't have the car. He can't run the mama. Daddy won't let me have the car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, can I get it? No, you can't get nothing. Because <laughs> you just heard when he spoke, he was speaking for who? Both of us. For both of us. That's right, brother. And that's what you looking. That's what you just listened to. <laughs> Somebody is speaking for 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 the head. Let's go. In Isaiah 44, go right on into Isaiah 44, and let's keep reading about this one God. And this is where this, is where this brother got tripped up in Dallas, and he walked away from the church. And they want to know, where does Jesus come from? I said, wait a minute, what do you mean where Jesus come from? Who you think talking here is Jesus? Mm -hmm. He said, that's Jehovah. I said, well, who you think Jehovah is? <laughs> okay, I don't want to give away all everything. <laughs> Isaiah 44. <laughs> and let's pick it up at verse 6. Isaiah 44 and verse 6. Okay, go ahead, my brother. Thus said the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. He said, I'm the first, and I'm the last. Beside me there is no God. Skip down to verse 8. And he'll keep running this thing down. Go ahead. Fear ye not, neither, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from, the, from that time and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yeah, there is no God. I know not any. See, they lock in when they hear stuff like this. Go ahead. They that make a graven image are all of them vanity. Oh, so he's talking about graven image. They're not God. That's right. They're not God. Go ahead. And their delectable things shall not profit. And they are, and they are, I'm sorry, and they are their own witnesses. They see not, nor, nor know that they may be ashamed. He said, ain't no other God beside me. Ain't no other God beside me. Paul going to give you a, a little more understanding right here. Because he going to say, 
what this title of this lesson is about. He's going to go into the God here. Let's go to Acts, the 17th chapter. Then we're going to go inside this Godhead and see how, see how many members in the Godhead. Let the book tell a story. So when somebody hears this lesson, they can't say, well, that brother said this. No, we're going to read everything. So if somebody lying, it ain't me or this brother. It's Paul. And like I said, if you want me to contact Paul, I try to get in contact with him. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you now, I didn't have no success last time I tried to do it. <laughs> Acts 17. And let's pick it up at verse 22. Go ahead. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. Go ahead. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore you, ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. And Paul said, I'm going to declare that God unto you. Go ahead. Uh, you want to skip or you want to keep? Uh, no, 24. I'm oh, sorry. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. He said, the God that made heaven and earth. So this, he, he's running this thing down to you. Skip down to verse 29, and he's going to say a key opener to this God thing. Go ahead. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, now, graven by art and man's device. No, he didn't deal with, now he didn't mention something to Godhead. Now we got to go inside this Godhead and see how many members in this Godhead. Because Godhead, if it was just God, why would he have to put a head on it? Because mm -hmm. he's letting you know it's more than one member in this Godhead. Just like man is more, is more than just man. It's one man and man, but they both are man. That's why when the, when the, when the, when the, when the Bible says, I don't want a man to do this, that means you went the latest too. That's right. You know, sometimes they be... Well, the Bible seen male should know you, you. You're a man also. Mm -hmm. You just a warm man. You know that's all. Now we gonna deal with this God here. Let's go into Genesis one. Let's find some little suspicious reading, and then we gonna check that reading out. Genesis one, and we gonna pick it up at verse one. Cause we was talking about the God that created the whole earth. Let's deal with Him. Go ahead. Uh, Genesis 1 and 1. Go ahead. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Whenever the beginning was, that's when he created the heaven and earth. We don't know when. Skip down to verse 26, and we'll go when he created man. I'm looking at what he's saying here when he created man. Pay attention to this. Go ahead. Verse 26. And God, and God said, let us make man in our... Wait, let us. Let us. Who is he talking to? Is he talking to the angels? Because the angels, we don't show the angels that end up being around the God that created everything was, was cherubim and angels. And what did they have? Four faces, you know, calf feet, six wings, eyes all in their wing. And he said, let us make man in our image. I done seen some two-faced men, but I ain't never seen no four-faced, you know. And, you know <laughs> so, <Right. laughs> so, but he said, so that's why I know he could he couldn't have he couldn't have been talking to no angel. That's right. So go ahead and finish that verse. Go ahead. Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. See now, now what this what this verse tells he made us in his image. So that means God, what, got two arms. He got two eyes. He got two ears. He got a nose. He got the same thing that we got if we made in his image. Same thing. You know, but he said, let us, let us. I wonder who this us is. Let's go into Isaiah 57. Isaiah 57. And we're going to see, is this guy in this high and lofty place sitting by himself? 
let the book, I hit one of them guys on Clubhouse with this. He couldn't go to no commercial break because they ain't the type of show it is. <laughs> but he came back. Well, see, he was talking about, he was talking to a group of people. I know he wasn't. I said, go back and read the verse again. Then he told, uh, brother, I didn't interrupt you. I said, but you sitting up here, when you lying, you don't want me to interrupt you after you had me wait almost an hour to say something. <laughs> and it's at night, time for me to go to bed. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm sitting there being patient. I said, okay, I'm going to let my young brothers do that. I'm at that age right now. I, I can't stand too much foolishness. Man. I can't, I, I can't handle it. Man. You know. Skipping that one, Genesis 11. Yeah. I, okay. That's just kind of that led us again. Okay. I'm going right. I'm going right for the juggler vein. My man. <laughs> Isaiah 57. Let's pick it up at verse 15. Go ahead, read that one verse. For thus said the high and lofty one that inhabited eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him. All with, with with them. With him. Them. Him. Y'all just don't see the T. It's T H I M. <laughs> them. That's them. No. <laughs> <laughs> with him. He said, I dwell in a high and holy place with him. See, as they just alike. Go ahead. Also, that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble. And to revive the heart of the contract ones. Now he said, whose name is holy. Let's go into Psalm and find out whose name is holy. Psalm 111. This guy said, I dwell in a high and holy place. Don't you think the third heaven is pretty high? <laughs> so he let you know, with him, not them. So Right away, that kill, you know it can be three, right? That's right. Three gone. Three is off the table. Yep. Only we're dealing with two now. I dwell with, dwell with him. He said, whose name is holy. Let's find out whose name is holy. Uh, show you that's not Isaiah talking now. Uh, pick it up at verse, excuse me, verse, uh, verse uh, read that one verse, verse 9. Go ahead. 111 and 9? Yeah, 111 and 9. Go ahead. He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. Uh, holy, is that Isaiah's name? Not at all. No, that's the Lord's name. Holy and reverend is his name. That's why we call ourselves Brother Melvin. When I be doing funerals, and they, is the preacher here? I said, yeah, Brother Melvin. Oh, okay, Reverend. I said, no, Brother Melvin. <laughs> and I, I'm not Reverend. That's, that's whose name is that? That's God's name, sir. Holy and reverend is his name. Who am I? I'm dirty rags. How am I going to call myself Reverend Crawford? Come on, man. They don't even understand. It. That's his name. I said, I don't use this name because this guy's. Then this guy also live in a high and holy place. I live in the ghetto. <laughs> Nothing high and holy about that. <laughs> Let's go <laughs> to Isaiah 45. <laughs> but I just want to show you that's God's name, whose name is holy. But he live in a high and holy place with him. If it was, even if it was talking to an angel, you want to tell me we ain't got but one angel? Mm -hmm. You point. got a new one, my name. That's right. So that's what that brother didn't understand. You know, I hit another brother with that, and all of a sudden he he loses his vision. What is um uh is that in my Bible? I said, Yeah, it's in your Bible. <laughs> <laughs> I said, boy, it's still that's the, we just like to dodge the word. You know, dodge the word. Is that that T H I M? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Isaiah 45. And let's pick it up at verse 5. Isaiah 45 and 5. Go ahead. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Skip down to verse 7 and go ahead. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. 
I, the Lord, do all these things. The Lord do evil? He told you if evil come up on the city, did not the Lord bring it? You know, <laughs> he don't want, God is the CEO of, of the whole creation. Everybody else worked for him. That's right. Whether they be good angels or whether they be bad angels. Mm -hmm. They're all employees of God. Skip down to verse 11 and go ahead. Thus said the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his maker, ask me of things to come concerning my sons. His maker, go ahead. And concerning the work of my hands, commanded ye me. I have made the earth and created man upon it. I, even my hands, have stretched out the heavens, and all their hosts have I commanded. Go ahead. I have raised him up in righteousness, and I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city. Wait a minute, who is this? Who is, he, he said, I raised him up. Let's, we got to find out who it is. Go and finish that verse, man. I need to find out who he didn't raise up in righteousness. Go ahead. And he shall let go my captives, not for price nor reward, said the Lord of hosts. That sounds like something Jesus is going to do. Mm -hmm. But let, we don't want to jump to conclusion. Let's go to Proverbs. Let's go into Proverbs. Because I'm starting to see two now. Because I was with a young lady. She's not even one God. I said, well, who do Jesus be talking to when he said, Father, you know, hear my prayer. She said, oh, he's talking to himself. <laughs> wow. And I thought about what my pastor told me. He said, you show him this. You show him that. And then that last something you got to show him is your back hitting that door. <laughs> I had to show him my back. I said, what kind of God you got to talk to himself? I said, I, then you want, to, you want me to thank you intelligent, but your God talked to himself. <laughs> Proverb 8, and let's pick it up at verse 6. You're going to keep seeing two, just like he said, let us make man. Proverb 8, and we're going to pick it up at verse 6. Go ahead. Here. For I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of, of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. That just took man out of the equation, didn't it? Took him out of the equation. No man can say all the words of my mouth are in righteousness. Don't, can't no man say that. That's right. If he do, you know right there, his mouth is lying. <laughs> Go ahead, verse 9. They are all plain to him that understandeth, and right to them that find knowledge. Now skip down to verse 14 and go ahead. Go ahead. Counsel is mine, and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me kings reign, and princes decree justice. By me princes rule, and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. Now, please pay attention to this here, because this, I don't know who this God is that, that love everybody. Let's read what this God loves. Go ahead. 17. I love them that love me. I love them that love me. Do everybody love the Lord? So that means he don't love everybody. Because <laughs> other than that, this statement wouldn't be true. He said, I love them that love me. And then, how do the Lord know that we love him? You got to keep them commandments. All the people that ain't here today, if they ain't sick or shut in and ain't keeping the Sabbath, do they love the Lord? They ain't keeping the commandment. Then, then you read in the commandment that remember the Sabbath day, that you're supposed to have, uh, Leviticus 23 say you're supposed to have a holy gathering on this day. Mm -hmm. So if you ain't having a holy gathering, Today and having it tomorrow, you don't love this guy. Because he said, I love them that love me. And guess what? He don't love you. Don't think because you're getting some blessing that the Lord loves you. Because the little blessing you get, the dope guy gets very better blessing. <laughs> He's staying in the house, ain't <laughs> you know, paying with the money that he's using, drug money. So don't imagine your blessing. You think you know the Lord. Because the Lord said, I reign on what? The wicked and the righteous. Mm -hmm. So that's why I don't equate my blessing 
to me knowing the Lord. What I crave my blessed to me knowing the Lord is his word and keeping his commandments. That's right, brother. That's what you got to do. Go ahead. In middle 17. And those that seek me early shall find me. Now skip down to verse 20 and let's keep rolling. Go ahead. I, I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. What about the one that don't love you? <laughs> he left somebody out, didn't he? He said, those that love me to inherit substance. Go ahead. And I will fill their treasures. See, that's how you get, that's how, now those are blessings that you enjoy. Because you're loving the Lord, and he is blessing you. And I can tell you, the Lord has been blessing me. He's been blessing me because I try my best, the hardest I can, to keep God's commandments. And they're not hard to keep. That's right, bro. You just be clowning when you're talking about the, the commandments too hard. That's all you're doing. Go, go ahead. 22. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way. Oh, the Lord possessed this guy in the beginning of his way. Go ahead. Before his works of old. Go ahead. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning or ever the, I'm sorry, from the beginning or ever the earth was. Even, even, that should have been even before the earth was. Even before the earth was, I was set up. Go ahead. When, when there were no depths. I was brought forth. He said, I brought forth. Go ahead. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. Go ahead. While as yet ye had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. And you know what I'm getting out of this? Is somebody wrote a plan, and then somebody is bringing it forth. <laughs> he, he said, before, he said, while it was yet... Uh, uh, while as yet he had not made the earth, nor the field, nor the height, or the part of the dust of the world. He said, I was there. If he was there with this guy that got this big plan, who was, was one of them? What was, what, they both had to be, he hadn't created man yet. Mm -hmm. So it had to be nothing but God said. And you know how many members in this Godhead? It's two members. Go ahead. What verse we at? 27. Go ahead. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. He was there. Go ahead. When he set up, a, when he set a compass upon the face of the death, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the fountains of the earth, foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily, and I was daily his delight. Rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in, in the habitable part of the earth. And my delight were with the sons of men. Now that they explain this guy that's doing this talking, that's why you probably have to come and die for the son of men. But I want to forewarn you. You got one group out there, the, the JWs. Jehovah's Witness, see, I'm going to say it. <laughs> they, they teaching that, see, God's first creation was what? Was Jesus. He created Jesus, then Jesus created everything. We're going to keep reading. We're going to disperse that in a minute. Go ahead. 32. Now, therefore, hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction, and be wise, and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. For whosoever findeth me, findeth life. And you find this guy, you find life. Go ahead. And shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that, all they that hate me love death. Now, y'all better remember them. I, I want to remind those that hate, the, hate Jesus what you love. You, uh, my, 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 my Israelite brothers that don't want to deal with the name Jesus. Because that's who's doing this talking here. And we're going to show you that. Let's go into John. We'll show you. It wasn't no two A. One no uh one uh one no God was there and he didn't create another God. <laughs> and he created everything else. No, that is, I can't read that in the Bible. We finna read about these two guys in this God here. Uh John one and let's pick it up at verse one. We're gonna read this one verse. 
and then we're gonna come, uh, we're gonna pop out of it and um, uh, 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 break it down because this is another something that's taught in error. Uh, John 1 and 1, go ahead. In the beginning was the word. A word that came out of my mouth. And No, sir. Go ahead. And the word was with God. The word was with God. And the word was God. So how many of you see that in this God here? Two. He said, in the beginning was the word. But just in God, now that's the word that come out. See, God spoke and exists in the world. Boy, I almost want to pass the tide plate when I did. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let me stop meddling. Let's, let's go. Put your mark in. We coming back. Let's go to first John. Well, I come out of the Sunday church. I don't, in no way, I bash them or make fun of them. I just wish they opened their eyes like the Lord opened my understanding. I was a Baptist preacher. And I was for real. I thought. Until I, I ran into the Israel of God. And hey, I didn't harden my heart when I heard this word. That's right. I didn't like it. I'm not going to stand and tell you, I was just, oh, that's the word of God. I'm going, this guy lying. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going over here and catch him in a lie. I said, I just can't wait until I catch him in a lie. <laughs> still trying. I'm still waiting. <laughs> he called him, yeah. <laughs> Because he reading this book. <laughs> he reading this book. You know. And uh, 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 I just pray that my brothers and sisters open their eyes and come to understanding. But I understand. It's a stronghold on them, brothers and sisters. So mm -hmm. please, give them a chance. Give them an opportunity. Be gentle with them. Work with them. Because it's a stronghold. Man, it is a stronghold on our brothers and sisters that's in that in uh, uh, in that Sunday uh, in that in that in that Roman Roman Catholic Roman Christianity stronghold. Mm -hmm. and everything you come up with, the devil give them out. So well, he said the Sabbath day is you supposed to have a holy. Every day is the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So well, every day is the Sabbath. You don't supposed to work. That's why your boyfriend don't work. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Let me stop meddling. Let me, <laughs> first John. Because all the boyfriends, they be, they be Sabbath keepers every day. <laughs> first John 5. And let's pick it up. Let's see who the word is. We want to make sure this ain't a word that came out of your mouth. First John 5 and verse 7. Go ahead. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. What happened to the Son? Father. The word, the son, I don't, so the son is the word. That's the name that he used. You know why he's called a word? Because he's a spokesman of the God here. He's a spokesman of the God here. I'm going to show you. Let's go into Revelation, Revelation uh, uh, 1. The father don't even talk to man. He's going to give you the order of things. See, because they say it's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Let's see. Let's see the old Holy Ghost here. He's here, but he ain't no God. Mm -hmm. Let's read. Let's read about this, these three that bear records in heaven. Verse 1. Go ahead. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which, gave, which God gave unto him. Now, that's one member of the God here. The Father, God. The, well, that's two. The revelation of Jesus Christ, he is God, God the Son. And then the Father gave it to him. That's the second member of the God here. Mm -hmm. How many gods you you see in this God here? Two. Go ahead. To show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. How did he do it? And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Oh, angel of the Holy Ghost. Angel of the Holy Ghost, that's right. Not God the Holy Ghost. That's right. <laughs> you know, he sent an angel to did, bring it to what? Bring it to man. Those are the three that bear record. Go ahead. Two. Who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Now that's, so you got God the Father. You got God the Son. And that's all you got in that God head. Then you got an angel, the one that he give it to the angel, angel bring it to man. See, 
the preacher wants to know, you shouldn't be, oh, God just spoke to me. No, angel the one got to speak to you because he the one that's bringing the message. Mm -hmm. He is the one. You know, let's go back to, let's go back, let's bear this out. Let's go back to 1 John 5. He said, they bear the record of what? The word of God. Now you, you, you know why they, now you're trying to see how they won because they got, all of them got the same word. That's what I'm going to show you. That's, that's all it is. Uh, uh, 1 John 5, pick it up at verse 10. Go ahead. He that believeth on the Son of God, Jesus, go have ahead. the witness in himself. He that believeth not God, have made him a liar. Why? Because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. Did we just read that, that the, the record of Jesus, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which the Father gave to him? We reading about the same thing. Go ahead. 11. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Jesus. I'm saying that for them J haters. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Let's go back to, now let's go back where we was at, uh, St. John 1. Now we understand that the word is Jesus. St. John 1 and we're going to pick it back up at, we're going to pick it back up at verse 1. But you can get some, because I want you to understand this. Go ahead. St. John 1 and 1. So, go ahead. In the beginning. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was Jesus. Go ahead. And the Word was with God. And the Word was with Jesus. Go ahead. And the Word was God. <laughs> and, and Jesus was God. And the Word was God. Hey, wait, I'm confusing y'all now. <laughs> We'll straighten it all out. Because in the beginning was the word. But we show the word, that's Jesus, right? That's right. And, and, the, and the word, that's Jesus, he was with God. What is this guy's name? We need to find out some names in a few minutes. Let's, let's, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let's just slow it down. Go ahead. Two. The same was in the beginning with God. Go ahead. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. So then we just read that, that before it was brought forth, I brought forth. Now you know which one was bringing forth. That was Jesus. That was Jesus bringing, in everything, uh, bringing everything forth. Go ahead. Uh, is that it? I'm going to skip. Uh, I'll skip down to um, verse 14 and read that verse 14. Go ahead. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Oh, so... Somebody, but one of, one of the members of the Godhead became flesh, which is the word. He became flesh. Flesh. <laughs> and was made and drilled among us. We wouldn't finish that. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. The only begotten of the Father. Go ahead. Full of grace and truth. Full of grace and truth. So, <laughs> you know, for years, when I come to, uh, to the Israel of God to catch uh, Brother Boo in the light, I was always told that was the father that was in the Old Testament. But we're going to find that out. But I'm going to show you to kill that thing, what I was saying that the Jehovah's Witness teach, that God created Jesus. But God, let me know these guys, he didn't create Jesus in the beginning. Let's, let's go into Philippians. Because, man, great as God is, can he create somebody equal to him? He, you not equal, you can't be equal to him. Why? Because I created you. Mm -hmm. Just like a computer is rare smart, just faster than us. Mm -hmm. It's not smarter than the guy that created it. You know how the guy that created him is, 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 is smarter? Because I can unplug him. Good point, brother. So, oh, that computer's smarter than you. Okay, let me see this. <laughs> mm. No, no. What's what, what the computer? <laughs> there you go. So, so you have to. When you create some, you can It cannot be equal to you. Let's go read some. It take me all day to figure out what a computer will figure out. But I tell you one thing: he can't unplug me. He be saying he's still going. <laughs> <laughs> Philippians 2, and let's pick it up at verse 5. Pay attention to what, what is said here. Philippians 2 and verse 5. Okay, go ahead. 
Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He was equal to God. He was equal to God. You know, he, but when was he in the form of God? In the beginning. He was in the form of God. So right away, that, that kill that aim of one, that kill that let you know it got more than one member in the Godhead. Because one is equal to what? One. If it was uh, if, if, if it was, if it was just one, you ain't. <laughs> You ain't equal to what you, it's, it's got to be. It, when it is equal to something, it got to be some on the other side mm -hmm. to be equal to. Mm -hmm. So he said, in, in the, in, when he was in the form of the God, thought it was not robbery to be equal to God. Go ahead. Seven. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. He made in the likeness of man. But if he took upon himself, he had to be around. He had to be around. Go ahead. Eight. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Hey, that's what we just read. The word became flesh. But we need to find out who is this guy that became. Let's go and run him down a little bit. Let's go in Isaiah 50. I'm going to do some magic right before your eyes here. I'm going to make the almighty God turn to a guy that they slapping on the jaw and pulling out his hair right before your eyes. Isaiah 50, well, let's pick it up at verse 1. Isaiah 50 and verse 1. Go ahead. Thus said the Lord, where is the bill of your mother's, I'm sorry, where is the bill of your mother's divorcement, whom I have put away? Or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your iniquities have you sold yourselves, and for your transgressions is your mother put away. He had divorced. He didn't divorce Judah, but he, he, he divorced Samarian. Uh, he's Israel. Go ahead. Two. Wherefore, when I came, was there no man? When I called, was there none to answer? Is my hand shortened at all that it cannot redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? He said, man, when I came, was no man. He said, my hand too short that I cannot redeem and I don't have no power to deliver. He said, let me put my resume on the table. Read it. Go ahead and read my resume. Go ahead. Behold, at my rebuke, I dry up the sea. I dried up the Red Sea. I dried up the River Jordan at my rebuke. Go ahead. I make the rivers a wilderness. Their fish stinketh because there is no water and die for thirst. I clothe the heavens with blackness. And I make sackcloth their covering. This guy got a lot of power. Go ahead. The Lord God had given me the tongue of the Lord. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You got all this power. Somebody got to give you something? He said, the Lord God, because now he done went from almighty God and became man now. This, this is the part you're reading about now. Go ahead. That I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He waketh he waken morning by morning. He wakened my ear to hear as to learn. He's all up in his ear. Go ahead. The Lord God had opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. This is the same guy that dried up the sea? Now he's spitting in his face? This is the same guy? Man, I had all that power you spit in my face. <laughs> Next time you get ready to spit, you ain't even have no tongue. You be. <laughs> <laughs> this guy had all power. Let's, let's go and find out what somebody was talking in his ear. He said, you had opened my ear. Let's go and find out who, who's talking in this guy's ear. Let's go to Psalm 40. He's saying something in his ear. and open my ear, and I wasn't rebellious with what he was saying. I went on ahead and handled the business. That's all he's saying in that verse. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Psalm 40, pick it up at verse 5. Go ahead. Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to usward. They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than I can be, that can be numbered. 
Go ahead. Let's see what he was saying in his ear, though. Let's get to that. Go ahead. Sacrifice and offerings thou didst not desire. Mine ears hast thou opened. That's what he was saying. He said, man, I don't like this sacrifice and offering. That's why he said, my ears have you opened. He said, man, I don't like this. These guys sin. They go sacrifice the animal. Next week, they got another animal. They just see some man, they sin and sin. And this is not what I asked them to do. I told them, no, what? To obey my voice. He said, I don't like this sacrifice and offering. Do you see anything there about the royal law? Not at all. How does the royal law get into this? He said, Jesus came and he fulfilled the law. He did fulfill the law, the law of animal sacrifice. The one that this guy that was talking in his ear didn't have no pledge in. Go ahead. Burnt offering and sin offerings has thou not required. He didn't require that. Go ahead. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. You got to read that eighth verse though. Go ahead. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Yeah, thy law is within my heart. Oh, I'm going to leave that law. He bring that law with him. <laughs> Man, they, you truly don't know this guy. Let's go into Exodus 6. We got to find out somebody was talking in somebody's ear, then somebody came and let people spit in their face. Let's go into Exodus 6, and let's, let's, let's find some names. 